In this video, we're going to study the concept of mechanical energy applied to mechanical system composed of a single degree of freedom. The single degree of freedom system is made out of a mass and a spring. The weight is acting downwards and the force in the spring is acting upwards. The force in the spring is directly proportional to the extension. The constant of proportionality is K. This is called the stiffness of the spring. To achieve static equilibrium, we equate the force of the spring to the mass or the weight mg. At equilibrium, the force in the spring is k multiplied by delta of equilibrium. It's equal to mass multiplied by g. So the displacement at which equilibrium is achieved is obtained from this equation. We are now going to define two quantities. The first quantity, we're going to call it the strain or potential energy stored in the spring. This is equal to the integration of the force in the spring integrated over the extension dx from 0 to x. So this internal energy is equal to half kx squared. We're going to define another quantity and we're going to call it the potential energy of the system. The potential energy of the system, we're going to define it as equal to that energy that is stored in the spring minus the work done by the external load when the mass is moved by distance x. And so the potential energy at any distance x will be equal to half kx squared minus the work done by the force, which is mgx. When we take the derivative of the potential energy with respect to the extension, we get the equilibrium equation kx minus mg. We notice that this rate of change of potential energy with respect to x, if we substitute the condition of equilibrium, which is that x is equal to delta, we get that k delta minus mg is equal to zero. This implies that at equilibrium, the rate of change of potential energy is equal to zero, which means the potential energy is either maximum or minimum at equilibrium. So to differentiate whether it's maximum or minimum, we need to calculate its second derivative. So calculating the second derivative of the potential energy with respect to x, it is equal to the constant k. k is positive, and therefore this quantity is positive, implying that the potential energy is minimum at equilibrium. And so this quantity that I defined, which is equal to the internal energy minus the work done, by minimizing that quantity, I'm able to obtain equilibrium. So this is another way of looking at equilibrium being the condition that would minimize the potential energy of the system. This condition applies even if we're working with a non-linear elastic spring. So let's see what happens if the relationship between the force and the displacement in the string follows a non-linear curve, one of those four curves shown here. This is a curve, this is another curve, a third curve, and a fourth curve, and all those curves tell me the relationship between the force in the spring and the extension x. Similar to the linear case, equilibrium is obtained when the force in the spring as a function of delta is equal to mg, where delta is the displacement at equilibrium. We're going to define the same two quantities. The first one is called the strain or potential energy stored in the spring, simply integrating the force in the spring integrated from zero to x dx. And the potential energy of the system is equal to this strain energy minus the work done by the external load. In that case, the external load is mg, the work done is mgx. And so the potential energy is equal to this quantity. Similar to the previous case, similar to the linear case, the rate of change of the potential energy with respect to x gives me f of x minus mg. At equilibrium, this quantity, the rate of change of potential energy with respect to x, is equal to f of delta minus mg. We're going to substitute x is equal to delta, the equilibrium displacement. And so the potential energy in this case is also equal to minimum at the equilibrium position. To know whether potential energy is maximum or minimum, we need to calculate the second derivative. The second derivative in this case, the second derivative of potential energy with respect to x squared is equal to the second derivative 
of these guys with respect to x, which gives me the slope f prime of x. And so whether the potential energy is minimum or maximum at equilibrium really depends on the slope of f prime of x, or depends on the slope of f of x. So basically depends on f prime of x. So let's see what this means when we look at the different linear curves for the force versus displacement in the springs. In the first and the second case, the slope is always positive. The relationship between f of x and x is such that the slope is always positive. So this curve implies that at equilibrium, the potential energy is always minimum. The second curve, also the slope is always positive, which means the potential energy in all these cases is, in all the cases of equilibrium, will be minimum. When we look at the third and the fourth curves, we notice that part of the curve has a decreasing curve, which means the slope is negative. In this part where the slope is negative, and in this part the slope is negative, equilibrium will be corresponding to potential energy of the system that is maximum, which implies that the equilibrium in these situations is unstable. What does this mean? It means any perturbation in equilibrium in the cases when the force versus displacement is following this negative slope cannot be maintained. Let's try to understand this a little bit more. If we assume that equilibrium is achieved at a displacement x1, so the force is equal to f of x1, if for whatever reason the spring is perturbed a little bit, then the force in the spring will decrease. As the force in the spring decrease, the outside force will overcome the force in the spring and the, the spring will keep extending and the force in the spring will keep decreasing and therefore equilibrium will not be maintained in that case. The last condition that we were not going to be studying further in this course is the case of a non-elastic spring. A non-elastic spring is a spring that absorbs energy, it does not release the energy, and this energy is a form of damage after removal of the load. For example, if this is a non-elastic spring, in the first state, this is the length of the spring, the shown here. At a load mg, the force in the spring is equal to f, and f is equal to mg. This is an extension delta. After removing the load, the spring does not go back to its original position. There is damage in the spring and there is some energy that went into that damage in the spring. If we look at the force versus displacement of that spring, this is the force versus displacement. This is the energy that was stored in the spring. And after removal of the load, there is an, a, a residual extension and the remaining part here in uh, the area here is equal to the lost energy, the energy that went into the damage of the spring. The last situation that we're going to study is the dynamic equilibrium of a mass spring system. In this case, we're going to study the equation of motion, assuming that the external forces acting on the spring are not equal. So in this case, we say mg acting downwards minus kx acting upwards. In this case, we have a linear spring is equal to the mass of multiplied by the acceleration of that mass. So mg minus kx is equal to mx double dot. Rearranging, mx double dot plus kx minus mg equals zero. This is a differential equation that we can solve, assuming that the velocity is equal to zero when x equal to zero, which means x dot is equal to zero when x equal to zero. We reach that x is equal to mg over k, multiplied by 1 minus cosine square root k over m multiplied by t. Notice the difference between this case and the static case is that the maximum x is obtained when the cosine is equal to negative 1. So 1 minus negative 1 is equal to 2, which means the maximum x is equal to 2 mg over k, which implies that the force in the spring is equal to k multiplied by kx maximum is equal to k multiplied by 2mg divided by k, which is equal to 2mg, which means even though I'm only applying a force mg, the dynamic equilibrium or under dynamic, in the dynamic situation, when the spring is moving up and down under the action of the force, 
under the action of the mass, the force in the spring will actually reach double the applied force. This constant, root k over m, is called omega, the natural frequency of the system. If you copy and paste this code in Mathematica, you can see the effect of changing the stiffness or the mass of the spring on the oscillations of that mass spring system. And I will show you um, this effect during the lecture. We can also look at the energy of the system by integrating the equilibrium equation from 0 to x. So we're going to take that equilibrium equation, integrate it from 0 to x, mx double dot dx, and integrate this from 0 to x, and because this is equal to 0, its integration becomes constant. We can further change x double dot dx, replace it by x dot dx dot, and so now we have the integration from 0 to x dot, mx dot dx dot, which upon integration will give me half mx dot plus half kx squared minus mgx is equal to constant. The first quantity, half mx dot squared, is what we call the kinetic energy. And the second quantity, half kx squared minus mgx, is equal to the potential energy of the system that we've defined in the static case. And so what this equation tells me is that in a dynamic situation, the energy is always equal to constant, and the kinetic energy and the potential energy as defined here, their sum is equal to constant.